story recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a comedy, horror, and thriller film called On Human. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. At home, Ever packs her mom's lunch. As her mom leaves, she tells Ever to have fun on the field trip but Ever makes a snide comment. So her mom asks what's wrong. Although Ever assures her that nothing's wrong, her mom starts to lecture her about puberty. Desperately, Ever stops her mom. Before leaving, her mom tells her to make good choices. Later, Tamara, her best friend, arrives to pick her up. Upon seeing Ever, Tamara immediately questions her fashion choices. On the drive, she keeps telling Ever to stop hiding her cuteness under layers, so Ever hesitantly unzips her jacket. Still, Tamara tells Ever to show her cuteness, or at least, let Ever's crush, Steven, see it. When Tamara starts mentioning JC, Ever stops her, saying she doesn't want to hear about Tamara's new friend. But Tamara says she just doesn't want to be antisocial for the rest of her life. Unamused, Ever tells Tamara to stop, but Tamara insists on her point. However, Ever keeps telling her to stop, panicking as she's actually telling Tamara to hit the brakes. Tamara ends up hitting Randall, who is crossing the street on his bike. Ever exits the vehicle to check on Randall. Though irritated at first, Randall's demeanor instantly changes when he notices that it's Tamara who hit him. Suddenly, Randall gets hit by a cup of juice thrown by Danny, who's driving by with his best friend Hunt and girlfriend JC. Danny offers a fake apology to Randall, saying he wasn't planning to hit him on the torso but on the head. Ever checks on Randall again, asking if he wants a ride, but Tamara immediately stops her, saying there's no room. At school, Mr. Lorenzo, the gym teacher, confiscates everyone's phones before they ride the bus. However, Ever doesn't have one. When the bus driver, Wayne, tries to get in, Lorenzo teases him about confiscating his phone too, but Wayne isn't having it. Meanwhile, Tamara tells Ever that the first time she got tongue was during a field trip, saying maybe it might be Ever's lucky day too. On the other hand, JC tells Candace, a girl with braces, to try black lipstick to bring out her smile. When Candace thanks her, JC says she's happy to do charity work. Soon, they set off to their destination. During the drive, Steven, who's sitting beside Randall, looks over fondly at Ever, but Danny continues to torment them by throwing a bag of chips at the two. Looking around the surroundings, Lorenzo realizes that Wayne is going the wrong way. When Lorenzo threatens to ride him up, Wayne taunts him. Suddenly, something splats blood on their windshield. Unable to see the road, Wayne drives down a cliff before hitting the brakes too hard hard, making everyone lurch from their seats. Checking in on everyone, Lorenzo sees that JC's nose is bleeding, so he tells her to cover it up because nobody wants to see it. When JC looks at Danny for help, he just looks away, disgusted. Suddenly, they hear something banging on the bus, startling everyone. The banging continues, sounding above them. Just then, the speakers start blaring a national alert, advising everyone to evacuate to the nearest fallout shelter because they're under siege by a chemical attack. Inspecting the door, Lorenzo notices a figure knocking, so he makes Wayne open the door despite everyone else's protests. When Lorenzo opens the door, Randall and Steven immediately try to flee as Lorenzo welcomes a strange person inside the bus. Suddenly, the man bites Lorenzo's face, making everyone panic and run to the emergency exit, stepping on Candace, who trips on the way out. Ever ends up with Tamara and the popular group before Steven and Randall come across them, pointing at a building they can go to for cover. The group runs toward it when they hear monstrous screams from a distance. Getting to the building, Danny immediately trips into a horse carcass, but Hunt and JC are too grossed out to help him. They follow Randall into an abandoned building, while he discusses the situation with Steven, noting the national broadcast alert. When Ever starts to worry about their families, Danny tells them that they're not in a comic book and the attacker is probably just high. They stop arguing when monstrous sounds echo, so the group runs inside. The group splits up to find weapons and barricade themselves in. Tamara ends up having to choose between sticking with Ever or going with JC, but she ends up following the latter, so Ever goes with Steven and Randall. Everyone starts gathering random items to block windows and doors. Later, Ever and Steven are alone, complaining about their bullies, so Steven says he just tunes them out. When Ever says it's just high school, Randall appears, cutting her off. He claims that it's a microcosm for life because people don't change. Just as they finish barricading the area, the group hears Candace calling for help outside. Ever wants to save Candace, but Randall stops her, pointing at the zombie lurking outside their walls. Looking outside, they notice that the zombie is 
is just watching Candace, so Everett continues to plead with the others, but not even Tamara takes her side. Still, Ever starts shouting for Candace and removing the barricades. Instead of Candace, a zombie Wayne bursts through the door, throwing Candace inside as the first zombie appears as well. The group immediately runs, barricading themselves in another room where they encounter Ryan, their classmate. When Ever asks what Ryan saw, Ryan details how he saw some of their classmates acting differently, lamenting his inability to help others. When Randall and Steven bring up the possibility of zombies, Danny stresses that there's no such thing. Zombies barge through the doors once more, surrounding their exits. The group scrambles to find an exit, so Randall breaks through a wall. Hunt fights the zombies to keep them at bay while the others escape. Danny runs to help Hunt. Meanwhile, Ryan struggles to go through the hole, being too big to fit, so Ever pushes him through. Just then, Danny sees the zombies drag Hunt away, so he runs in fear. When Ever gets through the hole, a zombie jumps on her, but Danny pulls a zombie away before Ever gets hurt. Getting to another room, Danny starts breaking down because he couldn't save Hunt. Danny says they deserve what's happening to them, telling everyone to look around the room. With tearful eyes, Danny says they were chosen as he sees a mannequin in his likeness, a jock with a bloody head. When everyone looks around, they notice their mannequin representations. Seeing hers, Ever notices her mannequin has the word nothing written on its face. Wayne appears from within, immediately attacking everyone. Danny goes to tackle Wayne, but he's easily overpowered. Just as Wayne grabs at Tamara, Randall hits him from behind. When the zombie driver is down, Randall continues to bash his head. Afterward, Tamara goes to hug Randall, considering him as their savior. Noticing Wayne's belongings, Ever notices that he had multiple substances and takes a lighter from his equipment. When Steven tells him that they should keep moving, Danny starts coughing, so they check on him. Danny raises his shirt, showing everyone that Wayne injected him with something, making him ill. Feeling cold, Danny takes his mannequin's jacket before leaving to save Hunt. As Danny starts struggling to walk, the others chase after him. Taking cans of spray paint, Danny mutters that they need to burn the zombies. Ryan continues to refer to Danny as Danielle, triggering him. He slams him on the wall for mentioning the name, shouting that he has already lost it all. Yet Ryan keeps reminding him. Ever shouts at Danny to let go of Ryan, so he does. Danny starts ranting about how he changed everything about himself, so he doesn't discuss himself anymore. Suddenly, Zombie Wayne bursts through the door. Everyone moves out of the way, except for Danny, so Wayne tackles him out the window. Despite the fall, Ryan notices that Danny is still moving and is able to run away. Consoling a crying JC, Randall hugs her, promising to keep everyone safe, making Ever roll her eyes. Randall tells everyone that they should barricade themselves inside the building, but Ever thinks that'll just trap them. Ever thinks they should seek help outside. She suggests they lure the zombies to one side of the building and escape when they find an opening so they can check their phones or see if the bus starts. Right away, Randall disagrees with the idea because it's dangerous, but Ever says she doesn't need his permission. Remembering Danny's words, Ever assembles a makeshift Molotov by tying cans of spray paint together using cloth, lighting it with a lighter before throwing it into a nearby van. An explosive fire sets off in the vehicle, which attracts some zombies, so Ever immediately goes to find an exit. Tamra tries to stop Ever, but Ever is bitter about her sticking with a popular crowd. Although Tamra doesn't want Ever to leave her, she doesn't chase after her. When Steven tries to stop her, Ever tells him to stop listening to Randall. He ends up coming with her, so Ever thanks him. Getting to the bus, Ever starts scouring for resources when a bloody hand limps from a seat, scaring them. Upon finding the bag of phones, Ever realizes that they're all broken. Ever throws a fit, starting to doubt herself. Her insecurities start pouring out, calling herself nothing. Steven tries to comfort her, saying it could be worse. The feeling of trying to reach their ideals yet not being able to do so. Ever asks if this is the part where they kiss, so they slowly lean in. But Ever stops after noticing the bus's radio beeping. She discovers a cassette tape and plays it, realizing that the emergency broadcast was merely a recording and someone set it up. Steven panics, so he pulls out a syringe filled with green liquid and injects her with it. Immediately, he apologizes because Ever wasn't supposed to find out. Randall appears, commending Steven. Steven for a good job as Ever starts feeling the effects. About four or five weeks ago, Randall schemed against the bullies, convincing Steven to play along so they could fix the bullies by scaring them into accountability. Steven agreed, so the two started their plan. At the abandoned building, they started preparing, but when Steven complained about the size of the building, Randall said Chip, who's a known dealer, would help. In the present time, Ever continues to get drowsy, noticing Lorenzo's body beside her and hearing Randall reprimanding Chip for killing Lorenzo. The 
zombie man from earlier removes his mask, revealing a perfectly non-zombie human. Chip defends that he was committing to the performance and that Lorenzo deserves it. Seeing visions, Ever sees Lorenzo turning at her, saying Chip looks familiar. So Ever recalls that earlier in the day, Chip was hanging out by the school bus. While conspiring, Wayne willingly volunteered to join their plan because Lorenzo has been bullying him since they were young. Wayne took some substance before showtime, so Chip asked if he could even function. But Wayne told him he's been waiting years for vengeance. In her delirious state, Ever hears Lorenzo tell her that he read somewhere that 99% of teens wouldn't be bullied if they simply believed they didn't deserve it. Earlier on, it was Chip who threw a balloon on the bus, faking the bloody hit. Randall spearheaded the planning of how they would lead their classmates into the building with Chip and Wayne's help. Chip revealed a jar of neon green liquid, a very potent substance that he calls their zombie juice. It'll make those injected follow what they're doing. So Chip injected some students with it earlier, leading them to follow his zombie movements. Worried, Steven asked what'll happen afterward. So Randall said they'll just play a along with their other classmates' testimonies. On the bus, Ever watches as Steven freaks out about the zombie juice, noting how the students were like World War Z zombies. Chip assures him that the drugs will wear off and the students will forget. However, Steven is certain that the students won't forget because they know. Just then, Ever recalls when she got attacked earlier. Her drug zombie classmates pleaded for help. Chip tells them that they've done their job but just got a few hiccups. However, Randall doesn't consider them as mere hiccups because Wayne almost got everyone killed. And now Wayne is dead. Chip points out that Randall has a bag full of real weapons, and Chip has managed to cage the zombies for Randall, so it's up to them to finish the job. Confused, Steven asks about the cage and weapons, not knowing that part of the plan. So Chip tells him it's a contingency plan, showing him a glove with multiple syringes stuck on each finger. Chip rants that it'll reduce all human error. He's pumped up as the two had given him a chance for vengeance for all the pain he went through in high school, noting that it never went away. Now, they have to clean up the plague, but Steven worries that people could die. Chip just says that might be needed. Standing up, Randall leaves, worrying that Tamara might be looking for him, then apologizes to Steven that he can't save anyone else because everyone must go or else they'll go to prison. When Chip admits that he's been in prison and doesn't want to go back, Steven breaks down, so Randall consoles him, saying they can just frame the girls too. He adds that Ever was too smart, so maybe Steven can have JC instead. Back at the building, Randall reminds Steven that there's no turning back. Meanwhile, Ever continues having delirious visions of Lorenzo talking to her, saying Chip will kill her. Ever tries to fight against the effects, forcing her body to move. Meanwhile, Randall takes Steven to the cage where their classmates are. Randall is ready to take out their classmates by overdosing them while Ever continues to crawl away from Chip, but he catches her anyway. She hallucinates Lorenzo standing up, reminding her about her mother telling her to make good choices. With that, Ever's eyes glow a red hue before headbutting Chip, fighting against him. Able to grab Chip's radio, Ever repeatedly bashes the equipment on Chip's head. Meanwhile, Randall and Steven inject their classmates. Hunt tries to protect Danny, but Randall taunts that without Danny, Hunt would have been a nobody. He then stabs a syringe in Hunt's hand. Randall leaves Steven with the others, encountering Tamra. Feigning grief, Randall tells Tamra that Ever is dead. He comforts her as Tamra cries. Soon, Ever runs back to the building while Randall gathers the group, convincing them to kill their drugged zombie classmates that are trapped in the room. Randall gives weapons to Tamra, JC, and Ryan, saying their classmates aren't like them anymore. While Randall and Steven prepare to open the cage, Ever arrives, pushing Steven out of the way as she stops the others from attacking. JC shouts, thinking Ever is one of the zombies, so Randall tries to convince them to attack. Ever desperately explains how the two tricked them, and Danny backs her up, making them realize that something is off. Ever appeals to Tamra, asking for her best friend to have her back, so Tamra hits Randall instead. His body flies to the wall, removing a cloth that reveals a mural of Randall being a savior with Tamra clutching onto his leg. When Steven grabs a syringe to attack Ever, Hunt and Danny pull him inside the cage. Hunt and Danny leave the cage, locking Steven inside to be beaten up by their classmates. Taking a sword, Randall starts attacking Ever, so JC throws a crowbar at Ever for defense. Coming to her rescue, Tamra tries to go against Randall, but when she tells him that she'll never be with him, Randall slices her weapon in half. As Randall is about to slash Tamra, Danny runs to take the blow. Ever throws the crowbar back to JC, who doesn't hesitate to hit Randall. However, Randall doesn't stay down as he goes to attack Ever. Scrambling through her bag, Ever 
never dodges his attacks until she procures a syringe glove, injecting him on the head before pushing him down the stairs. Ryan and JC check on Danny, so he apologizes for being horrible to them. The fight isn't over yet, because Randall comes back stronger than ever. Although Ever's already too weak to fight, her other female classmates step up, eager to take him down. Despite being outnumbered, Randall attacks, only to keep being hit. When JC gets punched, Ryan joins the fight, taking down Randall. Ever finishes the job by hitting Randall with the hilt of the sword. Seeing her classmates stare at her in awe, Ever wonders if she should have said something cool. About four or five hours later, the group ties the assailants as they recuperate, ready to finish the horrific experience. With the shared trauma, the bullies and the bullied band together. Danny finally admits to being in fat camp with Ryan before losing weight. JC befriends Candace, and Tamara realizes that one of them is a student who got on the wrong bus. Later, Tamara and Ever reconnect, with Tamara applauding Ever's badass makeover. The group starts the bus on their own, finally leaving the woods. Before they take off, Lorenzo wakes up, making everyone scream. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.